So Apple just dropped a new event and it was pretty interesting and of course we got the new iPhones. So let's talk about the standard 16 models first. The leaks were basically spot on, although there were a couple surprising things but we'll get to that in a bit. So to begin we got more saturated colors on the iPhone 16 and they do look pretty sick. I think this is the first time that the leaks got the colors completely spot on, like bam. Good job. All models are getting some action this year with the new action button, so that's pretty neat. And it does the same stuff as it does on the iPhone 15 Pro, so no surprises there. We also had rumors about a capture button, and it is on the new phones, but they're calling it the camera control, which actually makes more sense if you think about it, since it does more than just take a picture. You can use it to bring up the camera app whenever you're on the phone, click for photos, click and hold for videos. It can tell the differences between touch and press, and you can do this scrolly type thing, kind of like a dial to adjust and change various settings. There's also this something called visual intelligence, intelligence. You can point your phone camera at something and it'll give you details and actions you can do, kind of like Google Lens. If you see a poster for an event, it'll give you the option to add it to your calendar. It's pretty neat, but it is coming later this year, so not when the iPhones launch, so that's a bit sad, but we all have our own visual intelligence equipped anyway, so it's not a huge deal. You can also take full 48 megapixel photos on the standard iPhone, and the ultra-wide camera now has autofocus. You can also take macro photos, and spatial videos and photos are available on the base iPhone now, thanks to that new camera arrangement. Remember how back in the day when the iPhone 13 came out, they were like, oh, on the iPhone 13, you know, we had to rearrange the camera lens diagonally. Yeah, to fit them, since they're bigger. Yeah, definitely not to differentiate the two models, but because the camera lens are bigger, so they have to be diagonal now. Well, here they are with the big camera lens, and they're chilling in the old vertical layout. Turns out, you can stack two vertical lens on top of each other, even if they're bigger. Who would have thought? I mean, it must have been really hard since it took Apple, a trillion dollar company, three whole years to figure it out. So, props to them. Also, there's this feature that apparently can get rid of background wind noise in videos. We'll see how well that works because, you know, demos in real life, there's always a discrepancy there, so... Who knows? One thing the leaks did get wrong were the screen sizes. They were supposed to be bigger, but we're still at 6.1 inches and 6.7 inches compared to the 6.3 and 6.9 that were rumored. I mean, hey, 6.1 is still average, right? Wait, 6 inches is compact size now? What the heck? The Pro models though, well, we'll get to that. And they didn't mention anything about promotion, so I guess we're still stuck at the measly 60 hertz for the regular models. But. Eh, whatever, I don't really care about refresh rates personally. But all phones across the board get better ceramic shield, and I think it's like 50% better than the first gen ceramic shield on the iPhone 12, so eh. As for performance, surprisingly, we didn't get last year's A17, we actually jumped from the A16 in the iPhone 15 to the A18 chip here. So instead of staggering chip releases in their Pro versus non-Pro lineup, kind of like how in the iPhone 14 there was the A15, but the 14 Pro had the A16, it looks like they're going to have a regular version for the regular phone and a Pro version of the chip for the Pro phones, so it kind of makes sense. So these chips are 3 nanometers, which means this is going to be a more efficient chip, and coupled with a physically larger battery, it seems like these phones will have a promising battery life. There's also a better thermal design, which means that the iPhone 16 will support the AAA games that were previously only on the iPhone 15 Pro. So now you can finally play Resident Evil on your phone. It might be like a toaster, but you can play it now, I guess. Well, you have been able to play it on the iPhone 15, but like, you know, you can do it now on the 16, like the regular base model. Yippee! And the big flagship feature for the entire lineup, I guess you can say, is Apple Intelligence. But it ships in beta next month, so you probably won't get it on launch, which is a bit sad. But, you know... We have our own AI, actual intelligence, yippee. And then they talked about emergency SOS, which now allows you to share live videos to participating emergency services providers. So that's nice, I guess. Honestly, pretty decent upgrades compared to the iPhone 15 in this day and age. Apple intelligence and camera control are honestly the standout features to me, but it's a bit wonky because Apple intelligence isn't even shipping at launch. And without it, you can't take full advantage of the iPhone's camera control, which has that visual intelligence feature. So it's a bit sad. Anyways, moving on to the iPhone 16 Pro. Again, leaks nailed the colors. We got this desert titanium color, which looks all right. Kind of like poop, but maybe it looks better in person. Then the new screen sizes, the Pros did get that screen size bump that the leaks talked about, so they are bigger, um, 6.3 inches on the Pro, 6.9 inches on the Pro Max, I'd say that's, that's solid, it's pretty good. Man, what happened to the mini phones? They used to be so nice and compact. Shame they're gone now. The ultra-wide camera now also comes in 48 megapixels, which is pretty cool. The Tetra Prism 5X zoom design now ships on both phones, so the regular Pro gets the 5X zoom as well, unlike the 15 Pro, which only had a 3X optical zoom lens. Also, there's this thing called cinematic slow motion, which I think is 4K at 120fps, so wow, a new slow motion camera mode. Truly groundbreaking. 
It also came with some other video enhancements and I think a new version of photographic styles. They say the difference between this and a regular filter is that it does like an analysis or something of the photo and adjusts accordingly. So it's not just an overlay, but still, it seems like it's just filters on steroids. For video recording, you can now get studio quality audio, which are audio effects that you can apply when recording videos to sound more cinematic or sound like you're in a movie studio or something. So that's cool, I guess. There's also this really weird feature that I think Apple wasted too much time on. They yapped about this really weird little scenario where it's like, oh, lots of people use iPhones and voice memos to make their music. And you might be using voice memos to record things when inspiration strikes. And then they were like, now you can play a voice memo that's an instrumental of a song Song, and then you can sing over that while it plays on your speakers and then it'll isolate your voice and layer that voice on top of the existing instrumental. That's kind of cool I guess. I don't think that's like a pro level feature. I don't think you need the latest and greatest iPhone chip to isolate voice from background sounds. Like I'm pretty sure iPhones now have that like call thingy where it like isolates your voice on calls so like you don't hear any background sounds but like it's Cool, I guess. I don't make music, so I can't really judge. So if you do make music on your phone, let me know in the comments below and tell me if this is a feature that you could see yourself using. Then they had this little segment where they showed them filming the weekend's new music video using the phone. My problem with ads like these is that the thing is, yes, the iPhone is good enough to be a film camera in some cases. It's good enough for the weekend, right? But just because it can be used in that situation, just because it's good enough, doesn't mean it's the best tool for the job. True professionals are always going to choose the actual dedicated camera rather than the one built into a mobile phone because they have money they're willing to spend on actual cinema grade cameras because to them, it's an investment and they'll make back that investment in due time. Like let's say you're building a cabinet or something and you need to screw in a screw. There's no reason to use your Swiss army knife when you have a dedicated screwdriver. A carpenter is going to have a dedicated toolbox just like how a videographer is going to have a dedicated camera. Yes, the carpenter can use a Swiss Army knife. Yes, the videographer can use an iPhone, but why would they want to when actual pro-grade equivalent tools exist? The pro moniker has kind of lost its meaning because in reality, no actual professional is probably gonna use it in their serious day-to-day -day workflow. It's more of a marketing term at this point. However, I do like the pro phone still just because they put pro level features into hands of people who might otherwise not have access to them. If you need to film a personal movie project on a budget, say as a hobby or for school, then yes, it's beneficial to have a camera that can do that right in your pocket. But even hobbyist filmmakers, once they get to a certain point, they will find it beneficial to upgrade to an actual film camera. Basically my point is the iPhone won't ever truly be a pro camera. Kind of like how the Swiss Army knife will never be a substitute for an actual toolbox. The iPhone is the ultimate Swiss Army knife. Good for tasks in a pinch and casual users, even prosumers, but it probably won't ever replace the tools actual professionals use. Honestly, the market I see this appealing to the most are vloggers because now you can just record everything on your phone and you can edit on your phone. Like especially if you're on the go, that's really valuable to just have a computer that can do everything from writing your scripts to filming to editing. Might not be the best experience, but it's like the most compact package that can make that video. But yeah, that's my little tangent. The new iPhone 16 Pros come with the A18 Pro chips and they're a bit more powerful than the regular A18 chips. They kept mentioning how this would enable unique features that would be exclusive for the iPhone 16 Pro, but so far I'm not seeing any huge features. Just a weird voice memo gimmick. Some filters on steroids and a new slow motion mode. I don't know. There are the other camera upgrades like the zoom, but that's more about the actual hardware and photo processing rather than the actual performance aspect of it. So from the 16 to the 16 Pro, the differences you're getting essentially are ProMotion, always on display, probably a faster data transfer speed if they choose to nerf the wired data connection on the regular model like they did last year, slightly better ultra wide, slightly better zoom, the weird voice memo gimmick, some filters on steroids, and a new slow motion mode. That's kind of it, honestly. The regular base model 16 here seems to be the better value. Prices do remain the same across the board compared to last year. Oh, and one more thing. There were some MagSafe ecosystem updates and there's a new MagSafe charger. I have a bad feeling that old chargers will probably now be incompatible with these new iPhones, which kind of sucks. Also, what's with the weird transitions? Normally, Apple has these really cool sweeping transitions from one place in Apple Park to the next. This time, we just had fades to black. It feels a bit off and almost like they kind of rushed to put this event together. Come to think of it, this whole event felt kind of iffy and last minute. They had dramatic reveals for colors and announced a bunch of new features and add-ons to existing products instead of like 
actual new products, you know? Introducing the new Apple Watch Ultra color. And a slew of the iPhone features seem to be coming later this year instead of at launch, and everything just seemed a bit cobbled together. But oh well, it's over now. So I guess we'll see how the phones themselves are when the reviews drop next week. Alright, that's it for this video. Hopefully it was helpful. If it was, then consider liking and subscribing. Now, be awesome and stay techy. Bye! <laughs> Did it do?